Gabrissi, you're the most tacky thing walking and the most annoying one talking. Robin, you're just broke. I would even say poor of spirit and mind. Oh my goodness. So the episode opens with Robin saying, I can't believe Monique is pressing charges. Well, I mean, Monique got hit. Candace didn't have to press charges. She just could have taken her black eye like a woman, like Sunday Carter did. Candace says, I don't know if I want new luggage or not. Um, girl, you gonna go to Marshall's? Like, that's, that's no big deal. With, or Target. I think you could get a better deal at Marshall's. I went to Marshall's. You got Marshall's money. Well, your mama's money. Your mama's Marshall's money. So Karen and Monique have a dinner, and Monique has questions about Karen sending Candace to the cops. Oh, and now Momo finds out she can't go-go to Portugal. They really kind of danced around that. Karen went from quickly saying, oh, well, you know, if somebody tried to fight me, I'd, you know, send him to jail because I'd be calling for security. But then we go right into, well, my friendship with Candace has been damaged. Why this? Well, it's been scratched. It's not damaged, scratch. And Monique is like, you better watch out for that heifer. She needs a plot line. Now we're with Ashley and her golem, and he's going to spend some time with that baby. That baby. I mean, it looked just like him. Michael is literally hiding behind that baby after he called it that baby. He's like, oh, let me act like I love it. Oh, oh. Now we got the setup for the mess. So Karen told Monique about that Portugal trip before Ashley had a chance to tell her she wasn't invited. And now Ashley already got something under her turtleneck that she's been wearing all season. She's been real turtleneck this season. Okay, so now Ashley done done a statement for Momo since she can't go-go. She said, uh, I'm going to need you to tell how this heifer waves, knives, and faces and eggs people on. Oh, okay. So Momo knew they had that round your partner, do -si do swing this bed to and fro marriage. And Momo never said anything. And that makes me wonder about Chris Samuel. Mm. And what really went down with the cameraman. I said he was bussy that decided to come up. But that bussy was ready to be grabbed. Karen said, I'm going to sit next to Wendy and get on her nerve. Karen is in her bag on this trip. She's like, honey, I have arrived. And the spotlight is on me. Karen is playing the game this season. And we're all winning. Like Joe Biden. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm so, I'm just giddy. Now, the flight time from Baltimore to Libsyn is nine hours, so I don't know why they're saying 19 hours later. It don't take that long. Where did y'all fly through? Munich? <laughs> Them cheap Bravo tickets. And that barely business class. Oh, Karen hit her head. Oh, I have done that so many times. Mm. Wendy, you pricked up Dobrogato from the same Sex in the City episode we all did. Okay. Oh, wow, they actually got nice rooms after that budget flight. Oh, my God, what is that necklace Giselle had on? <laughs> like a loose rhinestone collar. Like, it literally was something that looked like it, it would have been Pete's. Was that from Quad's puppy line, Perfect Pooch? Oh, it's a headband, but just as hideous. Oh, that crap is Gucci. Just because it's Gucci don't mean it's taste. So Karen ain't drinking because she want to be sharp and get at Gabrissi instead of let Gabrissi get in her business. Oh, Jesus Christ. The second Wendy opened her mouth, <laughs> my parents came to this country with nothing. You know what? Our ancestors, same story. But I get your uniqueness. I get it. I get your struggle. However, that's all we've gotten to know about you. That, that, like, literally this, like, resume slash, like, I don't know what you're running for. I don't know what you're trying to be. This, like, um, like, student class president or Miss Diversity. I don't know. And I honestly don't care. But I would definitely say it, it, there's got to be more to you as a person than... You're an immigrant, you're an African woman. There's more to you. 
There's more to you than four degrees. There's more. There's got to be more. Because that's all we see and that's all you talk about. Let's talk about your obsession with bundles. So much hair. Is it heavy? Is it hot? Talk about that. Talk about how you keep your makeup on with all them packs in your head. Talk about that. That's a skill. So Wendy is named after Wendy's. You do give a junior cheeseburger tea. Good in a pinch, but not that filling. I'm going to take a mini nap if we're going to talk about her degrees now that Karen's piping up. And you see how Gabrissi just jumped in there. Karen trying to apologize. Well, why did you belittle her education? Gabrissi, why are you in it? What about your makeup line? You should get into that. Because every hue turned into every, huh? Oh, goodness, Wendy said, we don't need to talk about it. I put a button on. It's been fastened. Is that what you use to keep that wig on, buttons? It gives a bunchy button tee. So after Candace's oh, oh, overreaction to that sorry little, now check that, we got Gabrissi getting in Ashley's business. How's your marriage? She said, I'm 100% back in. How you with your ex? And, and how does it work with the, is it, it's like a timeshare situation because of all the baby mamas, or is it more like a harem? Is that why you got the bigger place? The barn? Because you're part of his stable? Karen's like, now you know this heifer got a torn took us and a cheating golem. Gabrissi, if you don't leave Ashley alone, then Wendy gone pipe up. You think you're going to cheat again on this trip? I know it's only been 20 minutes, but you think you're going to do it again right away? That what you're worried about? Look, y'all, Ashley ain't concerned. Now we got Robin. You shouldn't put it on you because Ashley said, look, I wasn't having sex with them, so, you know, I'm not surprised or upset. Or that mad. You know, we went on to therapy, but quiet as it's kept, I feel like they were going through the motions for the show. Ashley does not care. And I think Ashley saying, I'm not perfect either. She had been having affairs. He had probably caught her once or twice. So it, it could have been like, she was like, you know, I, I earned this one. Oh, Ashley, you are messy boots. So you gonna tell Candace on this trip, oh, I wrote a statement for Monique. You could tell her that when you got back. She wasn't gonna hear about it in Portugal. Okay, and now we've got Karen needling. Gabrissi, I'm concerned that Jamal isn't supporting you in Potomac. You're always alone. Oh, honey, she's getting her Dominique de Valeur on. Karen said, well, you don't seem to demand anything of Jamal, but you've got all these demands for us. Is Jamal not proud of you? Is he embarrassed? He might just be embarrassed of the constant thoughts of Chitete, not her crappy clothing or bulbous skull. Karen said, has anyone seen Jamal? <laughs> Karen has had it. Now, I know Rob Dixon did not just pipe up and say to Gabrissi, but if you're in a relationship that you're happy with, why wouldn't you share like we share? Robin has been listening to Gabrissi prattle on and on about how she should deal with Juan when she held on to a cheater, married him, and then eventually lost him to the streets and hasn't been able to find a man who'll appear with her since. Well, Sherman, but child, that was for two seconds and he ran off. He was always kind of hiding in the picture. So now Ashley goes back to the room to call her Gollum for Gollum Watch. Child Michael, M.I.A. Oh, God, Ashley, you, you really were getting on my nerves. <laughs> she said, let me, let me go on and act like I, I give a shit, and, and Wendy rattled me. <sighs> Oh, God, that high pitch was so shrill. Oh, that was shrill. Uh, I would have been like, I, I, if I'm 10 minutes late and I already told her 7 and then we talk about 11 minutes, I mean, I'm sure you know I can get it done that fast, but calm down, Heffa. I call her when I get home, too. Oh, my goodness, he did not say I don't want to be molested like this. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> not not molestaste. Ashley, you just whining about your baby. That baby fine. Here's the thing. If that baby wants to go to bed, guess what babies do? Wherever they is, they just nod off. That baby ain't working on the railroad. 
that baby ain't stuck on swing shift. But back in the lady pond, we've got Gabrice, Gabrissi, and Mr. Dixon. Rob. Just a simple Rob. She's a simple Rob. Now hold on, Robin. You've been friends with Gabrice and Gabrissi for how long? And he's a mystery man to y'all? You should know him. As much as you done been up her puss, sound like she keeping the ex-boyfriend away from the new one. Gabrissi said, well, you're Miss I Live With My Ex-Husband. Robin said, yeah, and I'm, I'm fine with it. Y'all see him. Gabrissi said, look, Robin, I'm going to act like 45 and demand unyielding loyalty. And she said, okay, like the toady she is. Oh, no, not Candace in these post-it notes. Being boring Candace. So Ashley comes by Karen's room the next morning. And Ashley's like, okay, I see you coming for Gabrice and Gabrissi. Well, she's been coming for you for four seasons now, so the shoe was finally on the other corned foot. Oh, Karen said if you're not going to share, then get out. Karen wants Gabrissi off the show, and she can take Rob with her. Rob. So we sightseeing. Ashley, Wendy did not call you to cry because you just called her a fake bitch 10 minutes ago and you don't really know her and ain't really made no effort. So, hmm. Ain't nobody calling you to feel worse. And then you just, you know what? Why were you crying with four degrees? Shouldn't you be smart enough to figure out your way around a tear? I know that's got to gum up that two pounds of eye makeup you got on. So now in the cable cars, it's Wendy, Gabrissi, and Ashley. And then you've got Rob, Karen, and the other one in, um, in the other car. Maybe I'll just start calling her the other one because I'm sick of her. So Karen thinks Portugal is a city. And Robin, you were thinking Brazil because they do speak Portuguese in Brazil. So like with your hair, you just got your facts crossed. So Robin's asking, were y'all satisfied with Ashley's explanation? Robin, you just can't understand what it's like to let your man cheat in peace, just like you can't understand what it's like to make a decent financial decision. Ashley and Michael are simply opposites of you in every possible way. And now Wendy is finished with Karen. Now, I thought we were finished with it last night. You said you put a button in it, right? But she's going to say when she talks about, and if she says four degrees or degrees or education, oh, I really can't. Shop. Yep. She did it. Okay, she's being shady, but you be shady too. So Wendy says, Karen, when you talked about my degrees, girl, everybody hands just went up and. I mean, it's like you you are a true joke and a one-season wonder. Wendy, this is official that she needs to go. It's not even funny at this point. You brought your own boring dead horse to beat, and I, I just, I'm tired of it. And I hope you are, too. So Karen apologizes for the umpteenth time, and we hope we move on. But I don't think we can. I think she's stuck in school forever. It's like, you've graduated. It, you got them. Now they're supposed to get dusty on a shelf or, and be put to use in your mind. Not used as a plot line. That said, you got four degrees just to say you can have them? Because uh, this is what you're doing for my... You, you, that four degrees, I figure you'd be making two, three million a year. Not living like this on reality TV. Taking budget Bravo flights. Hanging out with heifers like Gabrice and Gabrissi and Rob... Rob? Now Karen wants to backpedal and pussy pop saying, we got you, we are here for you with Jamal. That's what I meant to say. No, you meant to needle and prod. Now you're telling her to be cautious. Why do you care about her cooch? We don't care about your cooch. She said, you've been so interesting on Michael and Ashley and me and Ray. Why is yours exclusive? Karen said, well, I was guarded with you because you acted ass. Would you tell Satan your business? Not Satan. Gabrissa, you don't just talk about things in the Washington Post. You put them on the back of your shirt. Your poorly designed shirt. Well, actually, you did. You just put a little press on. You a Lee press on ass. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, so Gabrissi called him on the emergency line so he can say hi to her friends. I'm with Lady Eloise. 
that's not good enough for me. Karen said, I ain't giving you nothing. We can do that dance. Come on, get that dance. You about to lose your job. She said, your man lives in your phone. Candace gets crackling up. Well, Karen has brought it like dominoes this season. And I'll see you soon for something.